favorite styles for new wig wearers. Um, and I'm just going to name them and then I'll put the um, description down in the uh, um, I'll put the <laughs> I'll put the links in the description. So uh, first off, I think All That Jazz by Raquel Welch would make a really great first wig. It's a really cute kind of shaggy cut. Um, and it is open capless. By capless or open cap, what I mean is, is that it doesn't have the skeletal framework of a wig. Cheaper wigs will have a pre-made skeletal sort of um, cloth structure on the interior that all of the tracks of hair are then sewn into and they tend to be heavier and, and hotter. Um, an open or capless wig doesn't have that skeletal framework, hence why they call it capless. And so what that does is it allows the wig to breathe more because it's basically just the tracks and they're sewn together with bands of elastic. So the cap will actually stretch quite a bit more and they tend to have more forgiving fit. So that's why they make really great first time wigs. They're, they're lighter they're slightly more comfortable and they do tend to stretch more depending on what size head you wear. Um, so all that jazz is great. It comes in some really beautiful colors. It has a really neat texture. Definitely check that one out. I think Allure by John Renault is an excellent first time wig. It's short. It's got, I mean, it's really short, but it's got a lot of really cool texture to it. It's effortless to style and I sell a lot of them, so they look great on, on basically everybody. Um, and again, it comes in oodles and oodles of colors. And the great thing about Allure is it comes in petite and large size too, in case you need it. I think that um, Claire by Noriko would actually make a pretty decent first time wig, though I would say that if you have a large head, stay away from it because it, it fits tight. Most Noriko wigs um, are made for true average size caps, even if they are open capped. Um, but that wig is very cute. It's got permatease. All these have permatease in them, but I am not permatease averse. I actually embrace the permatease. Um, and especially since it keeps the wigs a little bit less expensive, it's nice to start out with something that's not quite as heavy of an investment. Get to know what looks good on you before you invest in really fancy cap constructions because I swear they're worth it when you get the monofilm and they look great. But the last thing you want to do is spend an arm and a leg on a wig and then not be able to return it because you, you modified it somehow or, you know, you wore it for a week because literally you try it on and that's, that's about it. If you wear it out at all, then we can't accept a return on it. And most wig companies will actually employ very similar uh, return tactics. Um, it's just because then we can't return it to the manufacturer. So just bear that in mind. We're not doing that to be mean. It's because we don't want to lose money on the transaction. And if you wear the wig out and become a wardrober, which is a real thing, that's a real term, Google it. Wardrobing is when somebody buys something on the internet, whether it's clothing, usually it's women, and usually it's either clothing or something that's high-end apparel, so a wig would qualify for that. And what they do is they, they buy them to go to a wedding or to go out on the town for the weekend and then they try to return them for the full price amount. And because wigs are not just a big investment for you, but they're expensive on our end too, as, as people who buy them wholesale. I mean, wholesale, these things aren't cheap either um, because of the amount of artistry and craftsmanship that goes into a lot of these wigs. Um, we really can't allow people to do that. So if you have it for an extended period of time and then try to return it, there's really nothing we can do for you. So make sure that you protect yourself, protect yourself and try less expensive styles first and then kind of work your way up. As you get more familiar with what sizes look great on you, what colors look good on you, work your way up to the fancy cap construction. Because um, another thing to keep in mind, I know this video is uber long, but I wanted to pack as much into it as I possibly could because um, it's a crash course. Um, the other thing that's really important to know is that if you're going from no hair to a full head of hair, people are going to notice. They're going to notice and that's okay too. Know that they're going to notice. Find a way to make peace with them noticing and just know that they're noticing that you look better and that you have more confidence. Because the more confident you are with the hair, which comes with time, I mean, it might not be an instantaneous thing, but the longer you wear it, the more comfortable you'll feel with it. Uh, the higher your comfort level is with it, 
the higher their comfort level is going to be with it, and the more they'll just accept it as an extension of you. And, you know, that gives you freedom to switch up your styles and to not be so self-conscious about whether or not people can tell. Because when you go from never wearing a wig before to your first ever wig, people are going to know. It's just, they're gonna know. Especially if you were almost bald <laughs> before you started, like I, I was. And that was something that gave me a lot of trepidation. I was very anxious about it, very antsy. I, I was like, oh my God, they could tell. How could they not tell? Um, but I always got complimented, you know, and people, I, I realized very quickly that once I became okay with it, other people became okay with it. And so it was just me once I made the adjustment. But that's, again, easier said than done. It comes with time. The analogy I like to use with a lot of my clients is that it's a lot like driving a car. <laughs> um, when you first start out driving a car, you know, and you've never driven a car before, you are a nervous wreck because this thing is so foreign, you know, and you're driving it and every little move you make stands out in your mind. Every time people see you in it, 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 it sticks out in your mind. And you know, you, you are extra scrutinizing of every single thing you do um, and everywhere you go. And you, you just don't wanna be that person that stands out as a bad driver, right? But then the longer you do it, over time, it just becomes a nat natural extension of you to the point where you don't even think about it anymore. You don't have to scrutinize over every little motion because your body just instinctually knows what to do because you've accepted this contraption as part of you. Well, wigs are very much like that. Um, I mean, of course, they're not as expensive as cars, and you know, you can't really kill anybody with a wig, I don't think, I hope not. Um, but, you know, it, it does take time. You wear them, you're real self-conscious about where you go, what kind of lighting, what kind of color, what kind of caps you're wearing. You're really self-conscious about the realism and all that stuff, but then over time, a weird thing happens, and you realize that people aren't paying as much attention to you or your hair <laughs> as you think that they are. And it's actually a really comforting thing <laughs> in a weird way because you're like, oh, well, whoosh, I don't have to think about that at all. Um, and again, it frees you up to wear whatever the hell you want, <laughs> you know, because you're doing it for you. And even though you, to a certain extent, you might be doing it for other people, like a husband or a significant other, or, you know, maybe you're a professional and you just want to look your best and look healthy, um, which I know is a concern for a lot of my ladies with cancer. They just want to, you know, resume normal life and they don't want people to treat them any differently, you know, and part of that is just wearing a wig and, and looking like yourself, like you're healthy, like you're vibrant because you are in your soul, you are. So you know, it's only right that this should reflect this, you know? Um, and after a while, you'll get that. You'll totally get that. It just takes time. Like I said in, at the very beginning of this video, a wig is not a panacea. A wig is not gonna do all this stuff for you. A lot of it is you working through your emotions and working through the grief process of your hair loss. But once you're through with it and you reach that fifth acceptance step, the world is your oyster because you could have any hair texture you want, in any color you want, in any shape and size you want, in any style you want. It all opens up. The sky is the limit, but it takes some time to become okay with that. Um, and, you know, don't be ashamed to buy things on sale. <laughs> Especially if you're buying them from someplace reputable. I'm all about sales. That's why I run them all the time. And that's why, you know, I always have an ongoing rotation of wigs that are on clearance um, that are either like review wigs or whatever. I think that it's okay <laughs> to buy things on sale. Um, so, you know, and if you're, if you're having difficulty finding a wig, send me a picture. Send me a picture of what you look like. Don't be embarrassed of, of your hair loss. At this point, I can safely say I've seen basically every variety of hair loss, both male and female, <laughs> come through my website. So, you know, I won't share the pictures with anybody unless you specifically tell me to. Um, and that way I can get a look at not only what your complexion looks like to help, you know, kind of get an idea of your coloring and things like that and what colors would really make your skin pop, but I can also um, 
get a good indication of what kind of style would work well. Um, so my email is heather at sisterwigs, that's C-Y-S-T-E-R wigs dot com. And I'd be very, very happy to help you find a wig that fits you well and um, doesn't break the bank. <laughs> um, so I think that's about it for this video. I basically just wanted to give people a really nice um, crash course, starter kit, what have you, in what to expect when you first start out wearing wigs. Oh, and one more thing that I want to point out um, in relation to the last point I made where people are going to notice. Even if people don't know you're wearing a wig, they are going to know that your hair has changed. So it's a very, very good idea before you ever even purchase the damn thing to kind of write down all the potential questions you could be asked and to come up with answers you can live with to them. You know, no in advance that the people who might potentially be asking these questions are not doing it to be mean to you. They they might be insensitive, but they're not doing it to be rude. It might come off that way, but they usually don't mean any harm by it. They're just curious. Um, and sometimes they might even be complimentary about it, but the curiosity part's usually at the forefront. They're going to say, oh, where'd you get your hair cut? When did you do that? Wow, your hair looks great. Did you get it cut? You know, they're gonna ask you all these little questions and some of them might be more forward about it than others. And just know that they're just being curious, like little kittens. And you have to figure out a way to either tell them that you're wearing a wig and make it, tell them in a way that won't make them uncomfortable and won't make you uncomfortable, or how to deflect so that you don't have to tell them. Because telling people is 100% your, your prerogative. You don't have to do it unless you feel comfortable with that. But if you do, make sure that you figure out a way to tell people that won't make them uncomfortable where you can kind of laugh it off and be like, oh, whatever, this is great. I love it. I could, you know, do whatever I want all the time with my hair. If I want to be a redhead for a day, my husband loves it, you know, something. And if you choose to deflect, figure out a way to do that tactfully. Um, you know, for me, I would just say, oh, well, thank you. And, um, uh, you know, actually, I, I was pretty open with it right from the beginning, but I think part of that is just because I'd run through a series of wiglets that I hated, which is why I don't carry wiglets in my store. Um, and, you know, I tried hats, I tried the makeup that you use to paint your scalp, I tried the fibers, I tried all kinds of crazy things because I was in denial and, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to admit to myself that I was losing my hair. And now that I'm accepting of it and know that that's what it is and that there's nothing really I can do about it. I just tell people because it feels more natural to me that way. Um, and for all the haters out there who think that people are fake if they wear wigs, well, those people, pardon my French, are bitches because they don't know what you're going through. They don't know and they're ignorant because if they weren't, they would be more sensitive and realize that Obviously, either you just didn't like the texture of your hair or there's something going on that would cause you to change it. And either way, it's none of their damn business. End of story. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to be casually curious and, you know, good natured and just, you know, friendly interest level in what's going on and, and you know, noticing that you look better and brighter and, and how did this happen? and people who are just being snarky and you just want to sock them in the face. I'm not advocating socking in the face for anybody. Actually, never. <laughs> Violence is not a solution. But, but I, I am saying that uh, it's probably a good idea to just know that it, sometimes that'll happen. It'll happen. And it's on them. It's not you. You know, don't let it put a chink in your armor. You're beautiful. Um, so other than that, I think that that is about it for me. Um, sorry that this video is epically, epically long, um, but I definitely wanted to be super thorough. And if you could think of any questions at all that I didn't answer in this video that you think would either be helpful for you to learn or for somebody else to learn about, Put it in the comments section or send it to me via email. I'd be very happy to answer any other questions you might have. So again, this is Heather 
from sisterwigs.com. It's an online boutique dedicated specifically to women with polycystic ovarian syndrome and related hair loss issues. But basically we'll sell to anybody. We love wig lovers. So if you love wigs, we love you. So have a great night and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.